In this video, we are going to get you set up in FLAMP, the second companion software program that works with FL Digi. And we're not going to waste any time. Let's get right to it. First, let's open up FLAMP. The focus of this series of videos is to help you configure and set up the FL Digi Suite so that you can uh, function, especially during Amron operations, and particularly for receiving. Another series of videos will cover the operations, which will cover manipulation of the programs and files and transmitting but this will get you functional as far as being able to receive. So before we get set up though, I wanted to point something out that a viewer brought up. Up here you see not connected in red. Well, the question that came up was FL message, which was covered in the previous video where you see down in the uh, lower side here, the lower portion, not connected. And here we have not connected. So the question was, uh, why when you open up FL Digi, does this say connected, but FL message doesn't? These are two completely different things. The developer chose to use not connected terminology for two different things. So it can be a little confusing. FL message has not connected here, but that relates to ARQ. That's automatic request queries. That is when you are connected to another station and you are sending packets of data and then a hash is sent back confirming that you got the whole block and that it will send the next piece of, of the file automatically. Okay, so uh, this is where you would add a, say a call sign, like what do we say? A seven B C D. All right. So, uh, what you do is hit send and connect. Actually, I want to not try to uh, connect, but as soon as you hit send and this station, A B C D responds, you connect with them. This will switch to connected. So that's automatic report, uh, query. And I mean, automated, automatic request query, where it will request packets of data that might be missing or broken. So it will get the whole complete file. Uh, that's not the same thing as FLAMP's not connected. FLAMP is a companion, is also a companion program with FL Digi. And FL Digi must be open and working so FLAMP can tether to FL Digi. And let me open up FL Digi and demonstrate. As soon as that opens, not connected will go away. There we go. Now it shows connected. That just means it's tethered to FL Digi. For some reason, the developer uh, set that up. So these two programs must be open together in order for FLAMP to function. So let me minimize this. Now let's get to updating or configuring and setting up FLAMP. This dialog box here, update call sign and info, shows up every time, even after you've set up FLAMP. So when that happens, just simply click OK. But in this case, this is our first time setting this up. And you're going to start off in conf the configure tab and just simply add your call sign in there, whether it's a tactical call sign or your FCC call sign. We'll use WXYZ. Uh, there we go. And that's all you need to add to this uh, particular form. These are the settings you want to have set on this window. Auto sync flamp to FL Digi mode selector. Make sure that's checked. Check change FL Digi mode just prior to transmit. Warn user when removing files from queue check. Clear missing blocks on non-canceled transmits, check. Inhibit header modem on block fills, check. 
autosave subfolders in local time, otherwise UTC. Check. Save relay data on program exit. Check. Autosave received data on 100% reception. Correct. Or check. Okay. Leave the other ones unchecked. And leave enable TXRX interval unchecked. What this means is that the way this is configured now, it will transmit for 2.9 minutes and it will stop transmitting for 10 seconds and then it will resume. So if you have a sizable file that would take, let's say, seven minutes to transmit, it would transmit for seven or 2.9 minutes, pause for 10 seconds, transmit for another 2.9 minutes, pause for 10 seconds, and then it would finish the rest of the file, the other however much time is remaining. The purpose of this, and there was some confusion and we got some clarification. The purpose of this is for repeaters. Most repeaters have a timeout setting. And if you run past that, the repeater will automatically stop transmitting. It will release. So if you have a repeater that's set to time out at three minutes. You want this to stop transmitting just before that. Let the repeater reset. In this case, give it 10 seconds to reset and then resume for the next 2.9 minutes until your file is transmitted. So it helps if you are familiar with your local repeater, if they allow digital modes, data modes to be passed over the repeater, find out what the timeout is on it for your repeater. It could be four minutes, five minutes before it times out. And then you adjust this accordingly. So you're not continuing to transmit while the repeater has disconnected. So that's what that's for. You don't need to worry about events. And transmit and receive are the two panes that will pertain to you if you're transmitting or receiving. That makes sense. But for this purpose, we're going to focus on receive because we'll be demonstrating receiving a FLAMP file, which will be the exact same file that was sent in the previous video covering FL message. The demonstration traffic that was sent, let me open this up. We still have it and there it is. This is our SIT rep that was sent from Montana. Well, simulated, sent from Montana. This event here that they're reporting on is in Montana. And uh, this came in in its raw form, just like this. It was saved in a K2S file, a custom form HTML file. And now we're going to demonstrate sending that exact same file, but we're going to use FLAMP to send it. Go ahead and close this for now, minimize it, and we'll bring up FL Digi. So you can see what it looks like when it's coming in. Now, we're sitting there monitoring on Contestia 4250. We're at 900 on the waterfall. We have our squelch settings. Everything is set the way we like it. So with our RX ID on, we should automatically switch modes, and you'll receive this file in FLAMP. So I'll turn on the uh, shortwave receiver. I have a Malahit shortwave receiver, upper sideband, set at 7110. And I'll make sure the audio isn't overdriven too much. I'll adjust that as the signal comes in. Now, as you can see, this header information is coming in and that will begin populating over here in the receive window. There is the file name. This is the date and time that it is being transmitted. This is who it's from. Amron National is the author of this document or the uh, sender, the FLAMP sender. And this will show you how big the file is, 513 bytes. 
It's broken down into nine blocks and the block sizes are 54 or 64 bytes per block. And as those blocks come in, it will fill in right here with these blue squares showing you the blocks that you're still missing. So as those blocks fill in, these numbers will drop off. Down here at the bottom, it will show you the blue highlighted file is the one you're receiving. It will give you a percentage of how much you've received. This right here is a queue number that's going to come in handy later on in future videos when you start getting into uh, relaying, receiving, transmitting files. But there's the file name, the queue number, the percentage that you've received. This is what it looks like. It's different, isn't it? This looks different than it did when you were receiving FL message. In FL message, you could read this plainly right here in uh, this window, but this appears as encryption. It's not. These are checksum hashes for each individual block that's broken down into. This will stop automatically and should give us, well, we have 100%. And there's our file. Okay, so uh, in this case, this was not sent uh, compressed. You can read the raw data in this window right here. We have 100% copy. We're not missing any blocks. If you have the ability to transmit and you're missing blocks, you can report and it will send the missing block requests when you uh, transmit using the report button and the missing blocks will show right up here. When the other station sees that you're missing two blocks, he can load just those two blocks and send those and fill those in, whichever ones uh, maybe came in garbled or for some reason that block was corrupted. It didn't pass the checksum uh, with this uh, checksum hash. So it is going to tell you something's wrong with that block. Uh, maybe the band faded. Maybe there was a lightning crash somewhere in the region. Something disrupted that signal. Maybe it's just weak. Uh, he's running low power. You might be missing blocks. You can request just the blocks so he doesn't have to send the entire file. You can send just the blocks that you're missing. It's a great feature. And here you can see that uh, it was 990 bytes all total, and it took two minutes and 13 seconds to send. So where did it go? Where did your file, do you, can you just double click on that and open it? Nope, it doesn't work that way. You have to go up just like an FL message up to your file tab from the drop down, select folders. And you're gonna see something familiar here. That's NBEMS, that's your NBEM files. It's the same place where your ICS messages are for FL message. So here's your FLAMP files and you have a relay folder, which we'll cover in later videos. And you have your RX folder and TX. Everything you transmit, every file you transmit is placed into your transmit folder. Everything you receive is placed in your RX folder. And everything that you received in a 24-hour period will be placed in a folder uh, that's automatically named by the date that it was received. So you can see I've received traffic on the, tw the 17th of June, and that was the Amron Intelligence Brief. We can go back. On the 24th, I received the Amron Intelligence Brief for that week. But today, which is July 3rd, we received this file right here. So what you can do is you can open this up and you may have to do a search and designate FL message to open this. The FL message executable file that is in your programs x86 folder. You're going to find it there. Navigate into FL message, double click on this FL message executable 
and then uh, choose to use this to open these types of files every time. So let's open it up. Well, look at that. It looks just like uh, what we opened yesterday because it's an FL message file. So there it is. Now you have a copy of this same file, one in FL message, because you received it in FL message. The other one you received via FLAMP, which saved the, the same file in the FLAMP receive folder. So let's go ahead and, oh, and then you can, of course, view the form just like with FL message. And there it is. The difference is this file, when it was received in FLAMP, is guaranteed 100% accuracy. There is not a period, a comma, a space out of place. This is really important because in the future, you're going to be learning about authenticating traffic. And we use PGP keys for digitally signing some traffic within Amron. And you'll be able to authenticate that traffic and know that it actually came from who you think it came from. If it says Amron actual key that you've downloaded, uh, you'll be able to authenticate that. So this helps uh, avoid spoofing man in the middle or any malicious parties passing malicious traffic, posing as official Amron traffic is really important to be able to authenticate that using PGP uh, signatures for confirming digitally signed traffic it has to be 100% accurate. This is the best way to do it. So with FL Digi, FL Message, and FL AMP, we can send a single file to an unlimited number of people at the same time. We could have 500 or 1,000 or 5,000 people receiving the same piece of traffic all at the same time. And it'll be 100% accurate as long as they have all of the blocks. So... I think we're set up now for FLAMP. See if we close FL Digi. No, and close. Oh, we got the red not connected because we've closed FL Digi. But uh, let me show you the NBIMS real quick. And NBIMS stands for Narrow Band Emergency Messaging Software. So your FL message in FL AMP is, uh, falls under NBEMS, and that's what that stands for. But let's open up file and let's navigate to the folder. And as you can see here, this is your NBEMS files folder, and we'll click on that. So this is going to look familiar to you because uh, from the FL message video where we showed you where is your message traffic saved when you receive it, well, that's in your NBEMS folder under your ICS messages. And there it is. That's what we received in the FL message video. And if we go back to the NBEMS folder, there's everything we've received in FLAMP. So ICS and FLAMP, both of those being MB NBEMS are kept here. That will get you up and running for receiving FL Digi, FL message, and FLAMP with the custom forms. Upcoming videos, we'll be covering the operations, the in and outs, familiarization with each of these programs and some of the nuances, little tips and tricks and best practices that will help you uh, receive, transmit, manage files, and uh, work with some of the features, some of the great features in these programs that Amron operators are using on a day-to-day -day basis. You don't have to be a member of Amron to use this free software that there, it's already being used and information, news and intelligence is already being passed. You can grab it if you follow these steps and don't miss out. All right, be safe, be vigilant. 73, this is John Jacob Schmidt, out.